Indonesian politics owe more to football fever than the traditional campaign trail. Noise obliterates any message. If it weren't for the colours, you mightn't be able to tell them apart. Still, after 50 years when Indonesians knew only the khaki of military dictatorship, it's variety that counts. But Indonesia's two traditional political giants are in trouble and leaking votes. In the yellow, the Golkar party that ran Sahato's dictatorship is desperate to return to power. And it's one of Sahato's own generals, Wiranto, who's emerged to serenade supporters with a message that he can save the party on the way to saving the country. mosh pit of Indonesian politics, General Wiranto rules. It's not all showbiz, there's a message of sorts. President Megawati Sukarno Putri has failed, Wiranto is the man in touch with the people. the presidential palace, Waranto must first convince his party he's the best candidate to oust Megawati, the daughter of Indonesia's founding father and first dictator, Sukarno. The homespun message to her PDIP fans ignores the political reality. Tens of millions of Indonesians are out of work. Infant mortality is up. Prices have soared. For the past few months, the Waranto travelling circus has blitzed Indonesia. It's Tuesday, so it's Balak Papan in Kalimantan, even if it's only for an hour. And at every stop, the excited reception only confirms Raranto's conviction that the presidency is his destiny. Justru mempunyai suatu suatu tanggung jawab yang besar di negeri ini. Saat ini saya merasa bahwa Indonesia membutuhkan pemimpin yang kuat, ya, membutuhkan pemimpin yang yang tahu problem-problem di Indonesia dan tahu untuk menyelesaikannya. Dan saya rasa saya memiliki kemampuan itu. The act is more pop star than statesman, but General Waranto believes his strong and decisive leadership can drag Indonesia from crisis. Saya kira bukan pop star yang membuat saya terkenal ya, tetapi posisi saya di masa lalu sebagai Menteri Pertahanan Keamanan dan juga Panglima Angkatan Bersat Bersenjata yang kebetulan pada saat saya melakukan tugas saya, Indonesia menghadapi masalah-masalah yang sangat kritis, Indonesia menghadapi problem yang sangat besar, dan setiap hari selama dua tahun. Saya selalu tampil di televisi untuk menjelaskan kepada masyarakat, memberikan keputusan. The crowds know him well, know him as a singer, know him as a good soldier, know him as a, a future leader of Indonesia. So, I think that's normal. They love him. I love him too. Not only they, I love him too. <laughs> This rally is 
General Ruranto's last chance to send his supporters into a political fever before they head off to the polling booths to elect a new parliament. And after that, he'll be back on the road for the main game, Indonesia's first ever direct presidential elections. Historic that may be, but so far the Ruranto Roadshow has been typical of the race for the presidential palace, big on colour and movement, short on policy detail. His supporters here either don't know or don't care about the shadows from East Timor that hang over Ruranto. They're more interested in a free T-shirt, a catchy tune and the vague promise of better times to come. Not that he wants to bore his fans with details and for that he blames the weather. Dalam kampanye memang uh, tidak mungkin kita bisa menyampaikan uh, suatu pandangan-pandangan yang lengkap, visi dan misi secara menyeluruh kepada masyarakat yang sangat diterupin di lapangan, dalam situasi yang sangat panas. Tidak mungkin uh, Anda bisa memberikan uh, uh, penjelasan panjang lebar. Anda akan uh, dilimpar batu oleh masyarakat di sana. Instead, a few grand gestures from the VIP tent swamp any real political dialogue. Back on the private jet, the Ruranto team plans the next offensive. Does it start to get confusing, helicopter one day plane? Yeah, yeah. But tomorrow, yeah, only uh, uh, go to, I must uh, meet uh, the, the people uh, in uh, two towns. General Nasution, a mentor of Ruranto's from the army, holds up his protege as Indonesia's finest. He's the best. Uh, son of Indonesia. As a person, I think he's uh, uh, a wise man. He's uh, a fair. He's uh, keeping for the uh, the regulation. He honored our constitution. Everything that needs for. Being a president, he got everything for that one. And Veranto is not the only ghost from the Sahato days trying to sell strength and tough leadership to voters. His major rival from army days, the disgraced former General Subianto Prabowo, the son-in-law of General Sahato, believes he's the one to run Indonesia. Even Sahato's daughter Tutut is dipping into the family billions to try her hand at politics. I think people are nostalgic for stability, for jobs, for lower prices, but they're not necessarily back for Suha uh, nostalgic for Suharto and his crowd. They're nostalgic for people who can bring that world back. I think it's both ironic and amusing that you have political parties headed, uh, I mean, that you have political candidates like Viranto, Prabowo, Tutu. Wimar Witola is a political commentator and was advisor to President Wahid when Viranto was dumped as defense minister. When he was fired by President Wahid in, in January 2000, I think he really believed his public career was finished, so he just went into hiding, you know, tried to keep his health and forgot everything. But within the space of these few years from 2000 and now, Indonesia's reform movement floundered. You see, uh, you know, crooks rising up again. It's like the night of the living dead where all these zombies come up. Far from being a zombie, though, Ruranto claims he's a true Democrat. Ruranto says in 1998, Sahato offered him ultimate power. Instead, he chose the path of democracy. I have a principle that when a person becomes president, when a person becomes a person in a country, when a person has an authority in a Dia harus bisa memperhitungkan bahwa otoritas yang dia pegang dapat memberikan kebaikan bagi negaranya. Saya berhitung bahwa otoritas yang saya miliki tahun 98 tidak mungkin ya bisa menyelesaikan problem negara saya. 
Even so, it's undeniable that his time as military chief saw gross violations of human rights across Indonesia. The worst of all in East Timor, after it voted for independence as militia gangs tore through the province. I met uh, General Wirantu uh, on more than one occasion. In June 99, when I first met him, I told him about the need for him to stop the militia gangs in East Timor. He answered to me, he said, if he wanted, he would stop them with a matter of hours. And then I said, and why don't you? He went silent. He knew of the plans, the activities of the militias in uh, East Timor back then. He didn't do anything to prevent the bloodshed. This special international court in Dili has already passed judgment on some minor actors in the atrocities from East Timor. Now the United Nations funded Serious Crimes Unit wants the main player in the dock. Looking up and, and uh, made him disappear right from the village. Maranto's already been indicted for crimes against humanity, for murder, forced deportation and persecution. In this case, General Maranto knew or had reason to know of crimes against humanity committed by his subordinates, that he failed to take reasonable and necessary measures to either prevent the crimes or to punish the perpetrators. Can you show me what kinds of injuries we have on, on these boats? American lawyer Nicholas Kunjian is turning the grim remnants of war into evidence. The UN estimates that more than 1,200 East Timorese died and a quarter of a million were forced to flee as refugees. That the commander of the Indonesian forces, supposedly in control at the time, now feels free to seek his country's presidency, sticks in the throat of the East Timorese. Well, uh, obviously uh, it is up to the Indonesian people to vote whoever uh, they want in a democracy. They can elect a lunatic, an idiot. They can elect someone like Wirantu. Uh, I would hope that the electorate you know, wouldn't inflict that much embarrassment, damage to their own country, to their own name, by electing someone like uh, Wirantu because of his uh, record in uh, Timor-Leste in 99. I think the world movement towards accountability, towards ending crimes against humanity, uh, would suffer if those who organized the violence in 1999 in East Timor were not brought to account. Ranto insists he's already been cleared by the Indonesian justice system. I feel that the issue of Timor has been solved by the law with a consistent and consequent from the government of Indonesia. The issue of Timor Timor is actually a G2G. It has become a national issue. Sebab saya sudah menjalankan proses pengadilan, proses penyelidikan yang jujur, adil dan terbuka, dan itu sudah selesai. Oleh karena itu, kalau sekarang ada kembali masalah timur-timur diungkit, barangkali memang ada kemauan yang sangat kuat ya untuk menjadikan timur-timur menjadi suatu problem ya bagi saya untuk menjadi kandidat presiden di Republik Indonesia. Despite Waranto's claim, he's never been tried or exonerated anywhere. The question of Waranto's morality is scarcely an issue in Indonesia, but the shadow of prosecution is political-led weight. Ask Waranto's main rival for the Golkar nomination, party chairman Akbar Tanjung. Accused of stealing millions of relief money, he escaped jail on a legal technicality. Akbar Tanjung was being hounded by, by the courts and escaped. Uh, Waranto maybe thinks he can do that, but he's no nimble dancer like, like Akbar Tanjung. If Ferranto does have political feet of clay, his Golkar party is about to let him know. It's to pick a presidential candidate within days. I think General Ferranto realises that he is very lucky to have escaped the jaws of justice, uh, you know, international condemnation, domestic uh, terror, and find himself slowly coming out to be quite respectable and in some ways lionised 
but I guess he doesn't know that people see him as sort of a curiosity, and even Golkar. Uh, yeah, it's 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 sort of neat to to, to invite Viranto to your party. You know, it's, I mean, it's like Hitler was still alive, you would ask him to entertain. You know, at at your office function. So I, I think he's sort of uh, uh, somebody who is at a crossroads in his image. Is it for real? This respectability, or is it just the last gasps of a dying career? Indonesia, sungguh indah permai. But the stage lights aren't being switched off on the ambitious soldier with the voice of gold quite yet. Even if Golkar rejects Ruranto as its presidential candidate, he's been worrying others who might back his drive for power. Ruranto, it seems, like the melody, is intent on lingering on. Go Indonesia.